Hello, my name is Singbing Kang, and I'm going to describe some of our applied research work at Zillow that are related to omnidirectional vision. For our international friends outside the United States, let me first give a brief introduction to Zillow. Zillow is the number one real estate and rental marketplace in the U.S. It launched in 2006 and is headquartered in Seattle. Zillow is involved in a wide range of home-related activities, including buying, selling, renting, financing, and remodeling. On the data front, Zillow has a database of more than 110 million U.S. homes and has 173 million monthly unique users. I'm part of a team at Zillow called Rich Media Experiences, or RMX. RMX's charter is to provide compelling new media experiences for home shoppers. Such new experiences go beyond the usual listening photos and involve videos and panoramas. Executing this charter, as you can imagine, requires a wide range of expertise, which is why RMX consists of program managers, software development engineers, designers, and applied scientists. One major product that came out of RMX is the 3D Home Tour, which I will describe next. Much of RMX's activities revolve around our 3D Home Tour product. The 3D Home Tour is a visual interface that the home shopper can use to virtually see a home on a smartphone, PC, or Mac. Each tour consists of an interconnected set of panoramas. Within the 3D Home Tour, you can pan around and zoom in and out. You can navigate from room to room by either clicking on the arrow at the bottom or at any thumbnail shown on the panel to the right. Generating a 3D home tour involves panoramic capture, panorama linking, and floor plan construction. Capture is done either using a 360 camera or by using a smartphone. When capturing using a smartphone, you would pan around and our algorithm would automatically stitch the input frames to generate the panorama. Once the panoramas are acquired, they are semi-automatically linked. This is to establish visual connection between pairs of panoramas, resulting in a graph structure with panoramas as its nodes. The graph structure is then used for visualization and for semi-automatic construction of the floor plan. Even though the basic concept of the 3D home is simple, the technology that enables it is non-trivial. As mentioned earlier, 3D Home Tour technology involves panoramic stitching, which is part of the capture process. In addition, panorama linking is done through point feature correspondence and structure for motion. We also detect wall features, more specifically doors, windows, and openings. I will describe our wall feature detection work later in the talk. In our first version of panorama stitching, the captured frames are uploaded to the cloud where they are stitched. In addition to requiring good bandwidth for data transfer, the process was also costly. Because we required cloud services to stitch the frames and generate the panoramas. 
For these practical reasons, we switch to on-device stitching. Currently, our on-device system runs on iPhones. It uses AV Foundation to access raw input frames, while Core Motion is used to provide processed IMU data that are used to aid image registration. To simplify registration, we, com we capture many images, specifically 540 frames, with an average shift of only two thirds of a degree. This also allows us to crop and use only the middle narrow vertical strip of each frame. Pairwise frame registration is done as each frame is captured and cropped. Once capture is done, the first last frame transform is computed to close the loop and the panorama is stitched. Here are more details of the algorithm. As each frame is captured, it is cropped to one fifth of its width. We do this to reduce the memory footprint and the amount of processing. This heuristic works because motion between frames is expected to be small which also allows us to use a simple translational motion model for registration. Note that only the first and last frames are uncropped because the motion between them can be large due to drift. We use the homography to model motion between the first and last frames, and it is computed using point-based matching. This transform is used to close the loop. Exposures are locally averaged to re reduce intensity banding effects. The panorama is generated by the usual feathering operation, followed by cropping to remove the dark areas at the top and bottom of the panorama. To reduce loop closure artifacts due to parallax between the first and last frames, we use optic flow for local image alignment prior to blending. Of course, we get the best results when capture is done using a tripod. Here are three sample results of on-device stitching. Two were captured using iPhone X and one with iPhone 11. The default capture mode for the iPhone 11 is ultra wide with 8 megapixel input frames. Each frame is in portrait orientation and has a 120 degree vertical field of view. Using the iPhone 11, capture and post processing takes about 50 seconds. For the iPhone X with 3 megapixel input frames, capture and post processing take about 32 seconds. Because on-device stitching does not rely on the availability of Wi-Fi for data transfer and on-the-cloud processing, it makes 3D home tour capture much more convenient and highly scalable. I mentioned earlier that one of the outputs of the 3D home tour pipeline is the floor plan. To facilitate the automation of floor plan generation, we first detect wall features in panoramas. By wall features, we mean windows, doors, and openings. Knowing where they are in each panorama allows us to automate the merging of rooms associated with panoramas. In addition, that would allow us to label parts of the floor plans appropriately. Our definition of wall features is different from those in other object data sets. For us, a door is space that separates two rooms or functional areas. This idea is shown in the bottom row. This is in contrast with two representative data sets, namely ADE20K and open image data sets, where the actual physical object is identified. For our 3D home tour pipeline, we define wall features to be an opening, door, or window. 
The main difference between the more generically named opening and a door is that an opening has no attachments. A window is the same as conventionally defined. Rather than sampling local perspective images from panoramas for training and testing, we opted for detecting directly from panoramas. The data set we use consists of about 10,000 panoramas of the interior of homes. On average, there are six wall features per panorama with the breakdown shown here. Note that we count closet doors as well. We use 70% of the data set for training uh, with the rest for validation and testing. We use faster RCNN architecture for detection and classification. What is interesting is we found that labels can be subjective. This is shown in the three graphs here. In this experiment, we asked three annotators, A, B, and C, to label wall features for the same 300 panoramas. For each data point in the precision recall graph, we consider the output of one annotator as ground truth, and the output of another is evaluated against that ground truth. As can be seen, the annotators do not always agree with each other on the labeling, especially for openings. On the left is the precision recall curve for the three wall features. It gives an overview of how the model does at different confidence thresholds. Ideally, we want the area under the curve to be one, but as I've mentioned a moment ago, this is not possible, even with human performance. The table on the right lives, lists the average position for two models and human performance. It is interesting to note that faster RCNN's performance is close to that of annotators. I'd like to make a quick comment on how the current COVID-19 situation has affected the volume of 3D home tour creation. The magnitude of the jump in the number of 3D home tours as a result of COVID-19 took us by surprise. As you can see in this graph, the increase in this number is as much as six times that in the prior month that is pre-COVID-19. On a different subject, I'd like to announce that we will be releasing our Zillow Indo dataset early next year. What is appealing about our dataset is that there are many panoramas that are captured in each home, thus providing rich real visual information of the home interior. As some of you may already know, Zillow is also into the business of acquiring and selling homes. This program is called Zillow Office. Our data set will consist of panoramas of Zillow Offer homes and their 2D floor plans. There are two types of panoramas that we will release, tagged and untagged panoramas. Tagged panoramas will have wall feature annotations locations within the floor plan, and room shape. Panoramas without such information are deemed to be untagged. We expect to have around 2,500 homes with an expected average of about 54.3 panoramas per home with 22.6 of them tagged. In other words, we expect to have about 135,000 panoramas in our data set. We are still in the process of building this data set and expect to release it early next year. Here's an example of information for a home. 
with tagged and untagged panoramas, a floor plan, and JSON description. Notice that the floor plan has windows and doors labeled on it. They are indicated in blue and yellow, respectively. Our dataset complements other datasets that are publicly available. I will briefly survey a few representative ones. Some of the datasets are RGBD based, some are synthetic, an example being the ICM and UIM dataset. There are others that are acquired using devices such as the Microsoft Connect, LiDAR, and laser scanners. Examples are the TUM RGBD and MIMAP datasets. More recently, there are RGBD datasets of synthetic scenes that are large, such as InteriorNet and structured 3D datasets. Also very popular are datasets that contain both RGBD and semantic information in the form of labeled objects. Three examples shown here are the Sun RGBD, ScanNet, and Gibson datasets. Another three RGBD datasets with semantic content are those of Stanford 2D 3D Semantic, Matterport 3D, and Facebook Replica. Each of these datasets is compelling in its own way. For example, the Facebook Replica dataset contains HDR textures and information on mirrors and other reflectors. There are also datasets dedicated to layouts. Panel Context and Matterport Layout provide cuboid room annotations, with Panel Context additionally supplying object shapes as well. The datasets of Liu et al. and QB Casa 5K, on the other hand, have annotated floor plans in vectorized format, and they can be used for learning how to convert images to floor plans. In this talk, I've touched on a couple of activities involved in generating a 3D home tour, namely on-device stitching and automatic wall feature detection in panoramas. Despite the simplicity of the 3D home concept, there are many challenges that remain in automating its pipeline. I have also announced our plan to release our Zillow indoor dataset next year which we hope will inspire innovative work on home construction from panoramic images. If you have any comments about our data set, please feel free to let me know. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.